So this again is a more detailed diagrammatic representation of what I had shown you in the previous uh, again showing you where you can have a ventral and an umbilical hernia and with specific mention regarding the exact site where it occurs. For example, a sciatic hernia most frequently occurs to the greater sacrosciatic foramen. So that is where a sciatic hernia occurs because it is a hernia which is not very commonly uh, mentioned or heard of. Similarly, a perineal hernia most frequently it occurs posterior to the superficial transverse perineal muscle. So these are some of the rarer hernias which we may not uh, encounter commonly but then uh, this picture gives you an idea regarding the exact site or the space through which these hernias occur. Now, what is the etiology behind hernia? So generally any hernia uh, can have an etiology which is either an increase in intra-abdominal pressure or a weakening or a defect in the abdominal wall. So an increase in intra-abdominal pressure is because of chronic straining so to reinforce that word straining, I would like to add on the word chronic. So, chronic persistent vigorous straining can result in an hernia. So, it can occur because of lifting heavy weights, chronic cough as in the case of a patient with uh, COPD or asthma, chronic constipation, either a habitual constipation or a rectal stricture, etc. Urinary causes, especially in elderly individuals with benign prosthetic hypertrophy now replaced by the term hyperplasia. So, a young child can also have hernia because of a raised intra-abdominal pressure, possibly because of a urethral stricture. Phimosis is an extremely rare cause for a hernia because usually a phimosis unless and until it is a BXO in which case yes you can have an obstruction but a phimosis per se causing a hernia is very very rare in fact it is unheard of. Obesity, yes, can result in an increase in intra-abdominal pressure resulting in hernia. Pregnancy, yes, it is another very important cause for hernias in females. Now, a weakening or a defect in the abdominal wall. So, this occurs because of the pelvic anatomy of females. If female pelvic anatomy is different from a male pelvic anatomy. So, which makes females more prone to develop a hernia. Smoking as an etiological factor very commonly known. Ascites, again it can have an increase in intra-abdominal pressure or a weakening of the abdominal wall. Appendicectomy or any other surgical procedures as such is known to cause an area of weakness through which a herniation can occur. Collagen vascular diseases, for example like uh, Ehlers Danlos syndromes etc. are known to cause Marfan's Ehlers Danlos syndrome are known to cause hernias. Similarly, Familial collagen disorders like prune belly syndrome is also known to precipitate the occurrence of a hernia, any hernia. So, what are the parts of a hernia? So, a hernia has three parts. It has coverings, it has a sac and it has contents. So, the coverings of a hernia are basically the layers of abdominal wall through which the sac passes through. So, a sac has different parts. So, a sac has a mouth which is this portion here. It has a body which is this portion here and it has a fundus which is this portion here. So, it has three important parts. So, in an uh, indirect sac in an inguinal hernia, it has a narrow neck as you can see here whereas and a thin body whereas the fundus it might vary. So, in a direct hernia usually you find that it has a wide mouth as you can see here and usually no neck and a thick body. In an epigastric hernia, on the other hand, has no sac at all. It just contains preperitoneal pad of fat. 